A brutal Halloween murder in London has been unsolved for nearly 58 years. Hello, true crimers. This is the case of Catherine Lillian Armstrong. Viewer discretion, it's advised. This is the only picture I can find of her, but Catherine at the time of the story was a 70-year-old woman living on her own, and she lived in Sandyford, which is in Glasgow in the United Kingdom. She had retired in 1957, where she used to be a headmistress, and that was at Denton Road Junior School. She was a practicing Methodist at the Central Methodist Church. Now, on that Halloween night in 1963, she was actually expected at her church. This was because they had a weekly choir practice, which was done every Thursday, but she would never make it. Now, the very next morning, one of Catherine's cousins, whose name was Ada Ridley, she was going to stop by Catherine's house just to say hello. She got to her house around 10.30 a.m. This is her house right here. And she knocked on the door, but no one answered. So she knocked again. No one answered. She would try one more time a few minutes later. No answer. Ada had also noticed that all of the curtains were closed. This was unusual to her because Catherine was usually up very, very early with her curtains open. So something was wrong. So concerned, Ada called police. They got there relatively quickly. They forced their way into the house and right there confronting them at the very bottom of her staircase was the body of Catherine Armstrong. She had a dress on and she was wearing slippers. By all appearances, it looked like she was dressed and ready to go, minus the slippers, uh, for a choir practice that night. She had a nylon stocking wrapped around her neck and her face was bloodied. Police also noticed she had defense wounds on her hands. Now, no weapon was found, but the wounds initially looked like they were stab wounds. And when the autopsy was done, it appeared she had been stabbed at least 30 times. Police theorized that she was able to make her assailant bleed because there was blood all over the house. But there was no indication that Catherine had been moved anywhere. The house had no forced entry. Nothing was stolen. No fingerprints, no footprints, no shoe prints. And like I said, no murder weapon, no knife was found. Police questioned over 5,000 residences in the area, but it literally turned up nothing. The only thing they got was that some students had seen her looking out her window around 6.30 p.m. that night. Her choir practice was supposed to be 7.30. Police theorized maybe teenagers did this, possibly ex-students from her school, but sadly, to this very day, Catherine's killer has never been caught. Was it a Halloween prank gone wrong or something more evil?